This is KGW News at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Brenda Braxton. It's a critical day for the Johnson & Johnson COVID vaccine. This is a live picture from the virtual meeting where a CDC advisory group is holding an emergency meeting. They're debating how to use the J&J &J vaccine after several people developed rare but potentially life-threatening blood clots. We've learned one of them was an Oregon woman who died. Now the CDC and Oregon Health Authority are trying to figure out if the vaccine contributed to her death. KGW's Mike Benner has more. Right out of the gate, it's important to note that it is too early to tell if the Johnson and Johnson vaccine is to blame for this woman's death. If it is, we have to acknowledge how rare this is. Of the seven and a half million doses of Jane J administered across the country, only seven people, all women, have reported serious blood clots. Two of those women have died, one of them here in Oregon. As far as what we know about her case, she is in her 50s and she got the Johnson & Johnson shot before the nationwide pause on April 13th. This woman then developed a serious blood clot in combination with very low platelets. We don't know what day this woman died, but we know the CDC was notified on Sunday and OHA on Tuesday. If you're sitting at home right now thinking, hey, I got the J&J &J shot, should I be worried? Chances are you're fine and outside the window of concern, but for peace of mind, Dr. Shimi Sharif of OHA shared with us the symptoms to keep an eye out for. Severe uh, and unusual headache outside of a general headache that headache sufferers usually experience. Uh, in addition to certain symptoms like shortness of breath, um, stroke-like symptoms, abdominal pain or leg pain. A committee that advises the CDC will be meeting Friday to determine if the pause should be lifted, continued, or modified. All signs point to it being lifted, and if that's the case, Dr. Sharif says that j, j shots will resume here in Oregon. Another indication of just how rare, although tragic, this Oregon woman's death is. Reporting for KGW News at Sunrise, I'm Mike Benner. Back. We heard from Governor Kate Brown within the last hour. She says Oregon is heading in the wrong direction. Cases are up. Hospitalizations are too. She says vaccines are the key to moving Oregon forward, but variants have the upper hand right now. Today's cases topped a thousand, with Oregon now ranking second in the nation for having the most rapid growth of infection spread. Our doctors and nurses are once again overwhelmed. Our hospitals are about to surpass 300 patients who are positive for COVID-19. Crossing the threshold to place several of our counties into extreme risk. And Governor Brown says if the trend continues, she will cancel any warnings. New counties deemed extreme risk will move to that level next Friday, April 30th. In the meantime, 10 counties moved into the high risk level today. That means restaurants, bars and gyms will have to reduce capacity to 25%. We want to switch gears right now and take a look outside on your Friday afternoon. That is the view from our Wells Fargo Skycam. Clouds have moved in. Pretty gray out there. Rod, we're on the verge of a wet weekend. Yeah, we are. Of course, we need the rain. I do want to let you know everything still points to the fact that we will stay dry this afternoon. So still lots of time to get out and maybe take care of some things uh, that you want to before the raindrops start to fall. Here's our weather system offshore. This moves into us uh, really late overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. Um, you can see the clouds are continuing to thicken up. There are some thin spots more so to the east of I-5, thicker cloud cover coming in from the west of the interstate. Here's the Astoria column camera. The clouds haven't budged at the coast, very overcast, but it continues to be dry, as I mentioned. Temperature right now up in Clatsop County is 52 degrees. Here's the wine country uh, just south of Salem, Willamette Valley Vineyards, looking back to the uh, west at thickening cloud cover from the hill there at the vineyard. Portland's at 56. Again, we still have partly sunny skies around, but uh, the clouds should be thickening up. It's been a sunnier morning than I thought it would be. 63 at noon, probably on the high side of what we could reach, and still 59 at 8 p.m. Uh, coming up, we will use Futurecast to talk about the timeline and how much rain I think we're going to get tonight, tomorrow, and Sunday. All right, we'll see you then. Thank you, Rod.
New at noon, Mayor Ted Wheeler says the state of emergency for Portland will remain in effect until Monday. The city is preparing for the possibility of demonstrations throughout the weekend. Wheeler first made the announcement on Tuesday after a jury found Derek Chauvin guilty on all charges in the death of George Floyd. Mayor Wheeler will talk more about this in a press conference coming up at 2 o'clock this afternoon. We'll stream it live for you on KGW.com. Well, more than a year into the pandemic, calling the Oregon Employment Department can be a real chore. Some people still can't get through. Others spend an hour on hold. Morgan Romero talked to one woman who's been out of work for this past year and didn't really deal with any issues until last month. Like many in the events business, Erin Beckstead lost her job right when the pandemic hit. She filed for unemployment benefits for a year with no problems until about five weeks ago when she started getting these letters and stopped getting paid. No payment was made because of questioning regarding your eligibility for a possible new claim. And there's nothing that has changed at all in my situation. So I've called, I've, I've sent emails. One of the numbers is a busy signal and the other one is a disconnected. Just hire a few more people. Could you do that? The employment department's antiquated computers still send those automated letters telling Oregonians to call for help. In reality, people can usually handle it online faster. It takes um, an incredible amount of time to go in and try to change those uh, automatic notices. And we have our experts that have the ability to do that instead focus on standing up the new benefit programs. We sent proactive notices out to people who had their claims coming up at that one year expiration, letting them know that, that they would need to file a new claim. We've been trying to share that information as broadly and as publicly as we can. Morgan Romero, KGW News.